Hi, Nicole. Hey, Joe. What's going on? How are you? I'm great. That's Doing, what's going good. on. Great, great to meet you. <laughs> great to meet you. How are you? I'm excellent. Where are you located? I live in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Okay, cool. Are you a Braves fan? Mm, I mean... If I have to get on a bandwagon, I'm a Braves fan. All right. Okay. <laughs> Not well, as much got... into baseball as I am football. I gotcha. Okay. They, they did profile the quarterback there on the that, that uh, Netflix special, didn't they? Um, I don't know. I'm thinking, you know, I'm just thinking of the football one that just came out on Case, the football player. I don't know if they did one yeah. for somebody in baseball. Seems seems like seems like they did with football. They they profiled the that was the one that Mahomes was in and um, yeah. a couple other people. So yeah, well cool. You got a good baseball team. You guys got a really good player from Kansas City. His name's Nicky Lopez. He's a great guy. Oh, so. I need to look him up because I'm Nicky too. You know, so right? now See? I got <laughs> now yeah, I have a, a real cool reason. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, hey, it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out and. I want to dive right in here first and mm -hmm. foremost and ask, how did you survive the last three years with COVID? It did its thing to all of us. How did you get through it and how did it change you? Oh, wow. So COVID was actually part of my awakening and transformation. Yeah. So um, my mother passed away in 2018 mm -hmm. and then uh, 2019, just making those adjustments and then 2020 COVID hit. And so for me, already kind of going through a grief cycle, the level of isolation, but also the opportunity to self-reflect brought me into a space of actually rediscovering who I was and making the decision to leave my 20-year career behind in the midst of the pandemic to go after and align to my passion and purpose. Yeah. So for me, it really was that time to really sit with myself. I mean, we were all, and you know, unless you had a family and stuff, I'm, I'm single. Um, I live alone. So it really forced me to be with myself, right. At an yeah. Even deeper level, uh, to get to where I am today. So it's interesting. I understand that all of us went through some suffering and some pain. And for me though, it's also the gratitude that it's led me to where I am today. So what were you doing for the previous 20 years? What was your career? I was in business management consulting. So okay. I worked on the change management and tech adoption side. So when we have these large companies that are on antiquated systems and they decide they need to level up, <laughs> they bring in consulting, mostly consulting firms, right, to help with that leveling up. So I worked on the people side of that, helping people get through the thought process. I call it the head, the heart, and the hands, right? Why are we doing it? How am I going to feel about it? And what do I do as a result? Yeah. So that's the work I did. I worked um, internationally and domestically across several different industries. Um, but yeah, that's the work I did for 20 years. So let's get into the work you do now. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a okay. career day. Okay. Yes. One of the kids looks up and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I help adults who desire to be happier in their lives become happier. Perfect. And every kid can get to the connection of, you know, the time that you weren't so happy <laughs> and you were, <laughs> you know, you were having your moment and you were pouting. Well, adults go through that process too. So I help them get out of that mode and get back to having an amazing life. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? So what's interesting is I didn't really remember that until I found some of the artifacts from my mother's passing. And I wanted to be a um, a TV, a TV, uh, not a reporter, a TV show like the Sally Jesse. <laughs> yeah, like people. a talk show host. Like a talk show host. There you go. I wanted to be a talk show host. I okay. literally found in Joe, what I found is I was a deep kid. Yeah. Like on this thing was like the impact of drugs on the youth and stuff. <laughs> like it wasn't like, I was like, man, I was. I realize now the work I do, I was like, I was already destined for this, but yeah, it was like really deep stuff. But yeah, I wanted to be a talk show host. So let's go back to your childhood and wh where you were born and raised and mm -hmm. some of these seeds that made you deep, that made you want to help people and eventually mm -hmm. segue from that 20 year business career into this life you have now. Mm -hmm. I would say I have always had a gift of connection. 
with people. I've always had a curiosity of how people operate and move. Um, I've always had a sense of kind of this cheerleader and leadership energy about me. I remember, you know, my mom would get upset with me because I would take food and give it to the kids in the neighborhood. Like she would make dinner and I'd be like running down the street with with chicken wings. <laughs> so I've come to realize, like, I believe that all of us have these innate gifts within us, you know, of just kind of whether it's in our DNA, but I also believe there's a spiritual element and I've always had that. Um, and so it just amplified itself as I've evolved into the person I am today, but it's always been there. I've always been a bit of a care bear, um, but I'm also very competitive. So I played sports and things of that nature. So I understand why the consulting side of things was very exciting for me, you know, being very goal oriented and driven as well. So it was like a nice little compliment. Absolutely. So who's been a hero for you in your life? Oh, my mom and my dad are my heroes. They really are. Um, even with my mother passing, when I think about how she navigated life, unfortunately, my mother had some very traumatic experiences growing up. And I have even more honor and respect for her, knowing more about her since she's passed, you know, just taking that time. And the same with my dad, like, to overcome so much adversity, to be such an amazing man, a loving man, during a time that particularly, you know, being a black man was very difficult. I'm just, I just respect him so much because he's such a loving and caring and positive person. So he's really one of my heroes as well. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now and spend some time with them, who would it be? Okay. So we know she's probably on half the people's list, but it's Oprah. Oh yeah. I have Oprah energy. Um, things that like how I show up, some of the things that I just align to, I would love to just have that conversation. I feel like um, part of it is also being seen and heard in a sense, you know, she's single, I'm single, I didn't have children. So just even some of the things I admire about her, of her focus in the world and, and leveraging that in the way that she has, I'd love to just have a chat with her. And then learn how to do some of this baking stuff, because that is... yeah. <laughs> I love what she's doing now. Like in the kitchen, I'm like, yeah, I'm baking bread, not happening. So yeah. yeah, I would like to just maybe be in the kitchen with her and hang out. <laughs> yeah, that's the number one answer. And she is the queen of talk show. So yeah. that, that's it. So, you know, obviously with someone like Oprah, they have a high level of motivation. They do a mm -hmm. lot of things. What is that for you? What gets you out of bed? What gets you to want to accomplish what you want to get done? Me being aligned to my soul's purpose. I have the greatest assignment in helping people see themselves fully and live a life that they love. That gets me up every single day that even if I'm not working with someone, the fact that I can impact someone's life just by a smile, just by acknowledgement is the greatest gift in the world. So you obviously have to keep clients uh, identities, you know, you can't put them out there, but mm -hmm. if you could just kind of vaguely think what's one of the best success stories you've ever been involved with. Oh. Joe, that's tough. <laughs> For a general <laughs> I mean, feeling. Yeah. I mean, I would say, you know, it really, so I have the privilege. I call it, one of my clients calls me a co-pilot. Right. Because I literally get to be on the adventure with my clients and to see and be the observer of where they started to where they are. is just amazing. So I've had clients that truly were stuck, did not know who they were anymore, feeling like the world was moving around them to now manifesting all of their dreams like like autopilot you know, that, that is just amazing or being in unhealthy, toxic relationships for decades and then being able to clear from that and have healthy, um, relationships that honor them and, and they can be seen in the light that they truly deserve. I mean, it's, I could go on and on, but sure. so, they're so different, but yeah, that's what I love. It, it's just, that's the, the success of it. If you are a changed person that gets to live at a greater level in your life, then it's just amazing.
So speaking of success and amazing, when you look on your life and everything you've done, mm -hmm. what are you the proudest of? I am the proudest that I literally took the leap of faith, Joe. I left my career behind based on a meditation that I was in and my mother told me to quit. Yeah. I did not have a plan. <laughs> I did not take the traditional route of, you know, making sure all these things were ticked and tied. I left and I'm very proud that I had enough belief in the mission to do so. And it'll be three years in January. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into a, a much younger version of yourself and you give yes. that version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained in your life up to this point. What would you yes. tell that much younger version of you? I would tell them it was all divinely aligned. Every experience, every challenge, um, every barrier was all for you for me to get to where I am today. Yeah. It like I when I look back and some of those questions, I would not be at the level of how I can serve with the knowledge and wisdom had I not gone through those experiences. So I would tell that my that younger version. This is all part of the plan. So if you could witness one event in human history that went down mm. with your own eyes, what would you love to have seen firsthand? Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Um, I don't know. That's a tough one for me. OK, that's fine. Know. Yeah. Hmm. You know what? I mean, I know it's the history of time, but I would actually have liked some kind of way that I could have seen my father. So my mother always told me the story that my dad was so excited when I was born that you could hear him running with the dimes in his pocket. So that dates us, right? There was no <laughs> cell phone. So I would have loved to see that. Yeah. Like if I had to think of something like literally that that level of joy. Um yeah, but other history moments, I really can't think of something where I would have wanted to to be there. I love that answer. That's a great answer. You know, oh, when you can bring it down to the person, I love it. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, yes. friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. Mm -hmm. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Oh, I know who I am. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I do for a living. <laughs> so... I am love. I am light. I am a consciousness shifter. I am a healer. I am a teacher. I am a free spirit. I am a navigator of new things. Um, I am joy. I am peace. I am, I'm just here to make the world a better place. So, Nicole, if anyone wants to hire you, learn more about you, anything about your world, where can they go? Yeah, so probably the best place is to go to my website. Um, that'll also lead you to my social channels. And that's Nicole Lee. That's N-I-C-H-O-L-E-L-E-E -E -E dot L-O-V-E. -E, so it is dot love. Nice. So you'll get a little taste of love every time you go there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Nicole, thank you so much for your story. Thanks for opening up. Best of luck with everything. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you for the opportunity. My pleasure. Thank you.